What up, what up, what up, what up? Dr. Dandruff is in the building. And I got a, man, I got a legend. You know, a, a legend in the L.A., legend in the world. We got a Mr. El Cucuy to Cool Carrillo. <laughs> Mr. Gil Carrillo has joined us, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that smile, man. Y'all give it up. Real well, time. How you doing, well, Mr. Well, thank, thank you for the invitation. Thank you for inviting me onto your show. I appreciate you, man. Real talk, man. Thank you for your time and everything. You know, you being in the hospital and all that. I'm hoping everything is uh is fine and dandy. Everything's everything's fine. You know, uh, give me another couple of days, I'll be able to eat chili and drink wine again, so I'll be good. Oh, okay. Oh, so it was the drinking part. You're like, oh, wait a minute. You know, yeah. <laughs> it, it, no, it, I, I, the, the short version is three years. Ago, oh. That's what. Hey, that's what happens. You a busy man. I don't know. Let me turn that damn thing off until we get done with this. I'm just so glad that wasn't my call. You're like, God damn it, this guy again. <laughs> there. Everyone. Phones off. No more interruptions. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I had, three years ago, I had a bleeding ulcer. And mm. some bled out. They put, they patched it up, sent me home. Everything's fine. And then I just found out the other day that it's not uncommon for those bleeding ulcers to start bleeding again. So it, it just started bleeding. I was in the hospital. It went down, put some cheek lid down in there, patched it up, and kicked my ass home. So Ooh. I'm back back at home doing what I do and uh, getting trying to get just back to normal. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I mean, we have, uh, you know, uh, I had uh, posted the flyer up yesterday and, uh, you know, a few fans had, you know, uh, commented on it. And, you know, they wanted me to ask you some questions, you know. Sure, go for it. Okay, but these are just random, just just boom, whatever first thing on your mind. Ready? Ready, whatever okay, you we ask. Got a, uh, we got, who are you going to watch, Colombo or Matlock? Colombo. Colombo, okay, all day. Okay, what makes you and your wife Perla a perfect fit, and how do you maintain this many years? It's all on her. <laughs> 51 years, uh, December will be 52 years. It's all her. She's the glue that keeps everything together. That's awesome. And you know, you, happy, happy wife, happy life. Hey, that's what they say. That's what's up. Three. We got uh Perry Mason or John Wayne. John Wayne all day. All day, all day. Uh hard liquor or just beer? Wine or hard liquor. Either one. Hard liquor, or wine, no beer. Oh the only man, time please. I drink beer is when I'm with George. Oh, okay. Hey, uh uh, first and foremost, we need to uh, uh, uh go into a sponsor. Uh, uh, this episode of uh, Dr. Dandra podcast is sponsored by Chevis. No, I'm just playing. I just want them to give me a year. Supply. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We got, uh, uh, how is it working with, uh, Mr. George Lopez? It's, uh, it's great. It, it's really, uh, out of everything that I've done in my career at this point in time in my life, it's, uh, probably the best thing that's happened since the documentary dropped. I've spent spoken all over the u.s i've spoken all over the place matter of fact next week i leave for seattle uh but the best part about it is uh, i found out that george is a true crime fan and uh he saw the documentary he reached out a friend of mine called up and said hey i just heard on the radio george lopez anybody know gil crew i haven't given me a call and I left the number i called it up we returned call first time i ever talked to the guy who talked 35 45 minutes it was great uh, yeah. Talking to him, he invited me uh, to go have a beer with him, mm. and I had no idea that the beer was going to be a podcast. He drinks beer on his podcast. Beautiful. And uh, so that's started. That was episode number eleven. Mm -hmm. We're now just dropped the other day. I think eighty four, and I've been on all but three of them with him. Yeah. Uh, he's calls me now as co host, and it's like going to a comedy show every week. It's going to a comedy show, drinking beer, free, front seat. Uh, you can say whatever you want. And it's his beer. It's his make of beer. Yes, it's his It's his, his brand. And so uh, it's all, uh, it's fun. The only bad part about it is once we're done, fighting traffic to come home. Other than that, it's, <laughs> it's great. And, you know, it's for like two hours, every problem in the world fades away because you think of nothing else other than what you're doing at the time. Right. I mean, that's so just good. Like going, that's just, go ahead. You're like going in the green room with three or four of your buddies, three comedians sitting there shooting the shit. That's all you do. That is hilarious. Really. And then you got a legend, you know, two legends in the building, you know, you with another, you know, uh, aspect of life. And then George just always being George, you know, that guy is funny. 
Only George. that he got, he got your laugh down right. Ha 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 I've heard I a lot of him, comments man. about that. Shout out to uh, ATC, you know, all things comedy and all them, and George Lopez down there doing the OMG High, you know, with the uh, Gil Carrillo Raider, which is awesome. Y'all check it out, real talk. It is a beautiful thing to watch. Okay, we got uh, question number uh, six. Uh, favorite comedian of all time? And don't just say George just because you're on his podcast. Well, I'd, I'd have to say George right up to right up there with, uh, oh, geez. Now, all of a sudden, you, I just drew a brain for Richard Pryor. Oh, Richard yeah, I love Pryor, Richard Pryor. I, I'm really, really liking uh, uh, the little guy right now, Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart, yeah, he's on everything, man. You can't watch a damn movie yeah. without Kevin Hart. Eddie Murphy, you know, when he used to do James Brown on Saturday. Hot he tub. was great. Get in the but, yes. Hey. But Richard Pryor, uh, he set the bar high. He was a genius. Man, that guy was awesome. Man, rest in peace, Richard Pryor. Uh, we got um, uh, number seven, ever had to shoot somebody on duty? No, no. I had to shoot when I was in Vietnam, but never on duty. I've been shot at on duty, Oof. but I've never I've never shot anybody. Okay, okay. Thank we God. Gotta... <laughs> hey, thank God. Uh, what is your favorite place to shop? I'm not a shopper. I, 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 you know, you, you talk about uh, favorite place to go eat or drink or, you know, something like that. I, I leave the shopping to the wife. They go to the malls and stuff like that. Okay, I mean it could be for anything, beer, or anything, just or wine, or just play favorite place to shop in general. Nothing. Liquor store. The liquor store. <laughs> He's at a little corner liquor store that got shot out. Uh, uh, shot Actually, out. if we're gonna say it, I'll, I'll say Stater Brothers. That's where I go buy all my wine. Hey, Stater Brothers got some good deals. Shout out Stater yep. Brothers. <laughs> all right, we got uh, number nine. Uh, favorite childhood memory story. Uh. I have to think on that one, uh, Doctor Dander. If I can't remember a favorite, uh, the only I remember the thing that I loved most about my childhood was playing saxophone. I started oh, playing wow. when I was in elementary school, and uh, so it was sax was always my favorite. Did it get you the girls? I mean, you were younger and stuff. Sure, sure did. Yeah. You know, uh, I can't do my homework, but I can play the saxophone. <laughs> yeah, I can play the sax. That's the thing. Sexy instrument and girls liked it. That's so, that's right. That's right. I mean, a female always loves a, a man with talent, you know. I mean, I'm I, I try to do as much as I can. I do everything, you know. I do everything but wash my ass. But other than that, uh, we got a <laughs> we got a, a number 10. And uh, how do you take in all the love from the community as far as being a legend in the world, but especially in a, in the Los Angeles, California area? By remaining humble, never forget where I came from, never forget where it all started. Uh, I'm open to everybody. I'm not better than anybody else. Uh, I'm just Gil. That's it. You know, a, a friend of mine once told me he had a bail bonds business mm -hmm. and we had a serious talk and he told me, he said, you know, I've seen people, uh, cause his, his place was right around the block from the station. And he says, you know, I've seen young deputies grow to be sergeant lieutenants, captains, everything. He says, but the higher they go and once they promote, they change, they're different people. Right. And as you, have never changed. You're just gente. And that's all I am. That so it, I'm, I'm just every day. I'm just gente. And I absorb and appreciate all the love that people get and give. And I hope that I can give them something in return. Beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. Uh, man, I could tell the story when I had uh, met you, Gil. I mean, you, you were you always a humble guy from, you know, even though I had just seen you once, but you know, it was a trip, you know, I mean, I'm at the Joe Batan uh, 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 concert, you know, we I opened up, you know, I was hosting the Joe Batan, you know, and um, the bathroom was full, of, you know, in the other room. And uh, I was like, man, I got to go to the bathroom. I've been drinking these micheladas, drinking all this shit. And I, I went to the restaurant next door and I had seen him. Uh, he was uh, right there eating uh, one of your buddies. Uh, I don't know if, whether he was a retired cop or whatever, but I was starstruck. I said, wait a minute. My piss went away. I hadn't had to do nothing. I ended up having to take a shit after I was done. You know what? Oh, I, I, oh, I got to go now. You know, I was like, man. And, you know, I didn't mean to interrupt them. And I had said, uh, Gil, Gil Curry, what? From the George Lopez? I had no idea you were a retired cop. I'm sorry, you know, because I'm younger. 
And, uh, you know, I just known you from the George Lopez podcast and, you know, you got up and, you know, we had barbecue sauce and shit. You're wait a minute. And you ended up taking a picture with me. You know, I felt so I felt bad. I was like, man, I just interrupted his uh, his prime rib, whatever he was eating. And uh, and but you did it, though. So that that says a lot about you. You know, that was a, that was a business meeting at Stephen Steakhouse. See, there you go. Yep. It was a Stephen Steakhouse. You're constantly making fun of me because I talk about Stephen Steakhouse. That's my home. That's uh, that's, awesome. that's my place. Yeah, I seen you dancing in the in the place where I was hosting. Yeah, I, like on your videos and stuff. You know, I'm not watching yeah. you, but I'm watching you. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, I mean, uh, what you got going now? I mean, I see you doing the little podcast. Uh, it's on in the background right now. You know, uh, yeah, I seen you do the little podcast with not little podcast, but you know, I guess they were like retired, uh, retired, r- retired vets and stuff, or or this podcast. Oh, that was right here. Chicago, yeah. maybe. Yeah, that yeah. that was probably the one in Chicago. Uh, I'm just doing a lot of speaking engagement. Last week I was in, uh, I just got back uh, from Coronado. Uh, Mm. I got back Monday. I just went to Coronado to do some speaking. A month before that, I was in San Diego this year. I've been to Chicago, Miami, Mm. uh, Las Vegas. And uh, busy. Right now I've got booked all, I leave next week for uh, Seattle. And I've got a, trip coming up uh beginning next year to delaware oh, so wow. i do a lot of speaking a lot of podcasting a lot of zoom television stuff i've done zoom with australia and canada and been on with dr oz and the tamron hall show so, and now he's with dr dandruff hey dr. Dandruff, you know. i am the i am the best gynecologist on the weekends y'all y'all hey there you go. if you need a pap smear i'm here for you I got there you, you go. For free. And if you don't get it right the first time, you'll be kind enough to give him a second shot. Yeah, I'll, I'll use a clean glove this time, you know? <laughs> <laughs> man, it's it's always a pleasure, man. You know, uh, uh, you know, I don't mean to bang your line, but, you know, sometimes it's like, you know, uh, you had gave me your card and all that, and, you know, you had helped me out through some tough times. You know, I was in the streets, and uh, I had to, you know, hit you up like, you know, it's – it's getting rough for me, you know, it's hard. And you always had told me never give up, you know, I always keep going, keep going. And now I'm away from the hood. Now I'm in Woodland Hills. Now I'm over here. And you're on, yeah. You're on the other side of the world. That's, that's They don't even ask you for green cards over there. No. Yeah. They, uh, no, I'm used to people trying to sell me food stamps. I'm like, dude, yeah. I ain't got, come on. Like I need some food stamps. You know what I'm saying? So it's far away. There's no more girls that, that ride around with duct tape on their taillights. There's Tesla's down here. I mean, it, it's a beautiful thing, but you know what I'm trying to say is you the one that kept me going. And I was like, you know what? It, it, I got to just get, I, I got to stop this habit, stop what I'm on and, and start, you know, doing what's right for me. Good. I'm happy so, for you. Yo, you are the inspiration on, on my my part of the end to be like, get your ass up and do something, man. Come on, man. You know, so I've been doing my comedy thing. Good. You know? But podcasting is, is where it's at. I went and, you know, spent my rent money on all this uh, equipment. I'm hoping it pays off. You know, I'm trying to get a golden ticket like Charlie, you know, but. <clears throat> yeah, go. I hope it works out. Oh, it's trying. Hey, it's working out. I got Gil Carrillo in the mother house, y'all. Come on, stop. Well, let's let, let's hope we get some viewers. You know, it, you know that's where it's oh, all at. Get some viewers, get some sponsors, and get it going. You know, uh, George just one time said he, said, he said, "Why don't you start your own?" He was giving me advice, telling me maybe you ought to think about starting your own podcast. And I said, "No, no, not at all. I'm, I'm why, very why happy." Not? Going. I know what I'm, you know, this is George's show. He runs it. He carries it. I know my place. He's the man. Uh, It's kind of like Johnny Carson, Ed McMahon. That's Johnny Carson star and Ed McMahon set off to the right and left. That's what I do. And I don't have to worry about anything else. And I'm not in it for financial gain. Mm -hmm. At this point in time, I'm pretty well settled with uh, where I'm going to be. And I'll never be a rich man, but rich people don't have what I have. That part, you got a lot of love, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people are rich and they're not happy. That's right. You know, and you look always happy, always with a smile on your face, you know, and it's like, but what I'm saying is how come you don't have one is because you're a great speaker. You always know how to be blunt and always just keep it a hundred. That's just what you have to do. You know, Thanks. don't fake the front. Are you, are you people out there trying to fake the front? Just be who you are, stay in your lane and just uh, mind your own business and just take care of yours. Yeah. That's all you can do. Like real talk, man, Gil. 
You're awesome, man. Like I said, it's crazy. Like, it's crazy. Stop, you know, like, you're make my head like Jack in the box, brother. I'm not going to be able to fit it through the door. Hey, it's, it is Halloween. You know, we can just put some candles in your eyes. You know, yeah. put you outside. <laughs> but uh, uh, what, what what's one of your favorite episodes that, that you've done with, with George and, 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 and who was it with? Jeez, uh, he's done so many good ones. Uh, and now I, I'm, I'm going to, I, and George always gets in my ass because I can't remember shit. Uh, <laughs> when it comes to people and things, you talk about any one of my cases over the years, I can tell you everything. I can tell you detail after detail. Mm -hmm. uh, but we had a guy on there that was, uh, and he's a well-known comedian. And I apologize. I really do. But he, he made me laugh harder than anybody. Uh, I there. think I know who you're talking about. Yeah. His dad, uh, he was reading a letter. He was, he was telling us about a letter his dad wrote. And, uh, and God, about Geraldo Rivera. Oh, well, Geraldo, the one that got hit with a chair by the KKK. Yeah, he he, uh, <laughs> he he was talking about this letter that his dad wrote. His dad uh, is Italian. They're from Boston. And he and just with, you know, it says, Geraldo Rivera, you ugly fuck. <laughs> you know, and that's the way it started out. And I don't think I've seen George laugh as much. Uh, he, he's, he's had some brilliant – we just had uh, – God damn it! I and I apologize. It's fine. I should stop talking about it because I keep forgetting the guest, and George is gonna be pissed off. You know, <laughs> uh, we just had uh, God too, and she was so funny. She was good. The one with the uh, impressions. She did. Uh, sat, she was on Saturday Night Live, and she did Chola from Pico Rivera. Uh, uh, and, and, and isn't that where you're from, Pico Rivera? Yeah, I'm from Pico. Yeah, and, and you're oh back in the day when it was just uh, uh Rivera or, or or was it just it Pico? was just Pico it was just Pico there you go yeah I remember that and and and, and not only is the show funny but it's like uh like it's an enlightenment like you can learn from it you know what I mean but I didn't know that it was just Pico and then you know because I'm from Almani so we're we're right there by each other so it's like damn it was it was just Pico. You know, then you yeah, said that's why Pico Flores. goes all the way through. And I was like, oh, man. Were you from Monte Flores? Hey, 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 hey. My hey, pro hey. officer is watching right now. No, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> He's, I'm going to go, oh, oh, I should have went to go arrest your ass. Make you learn your lesson. <clears throat> yeah, but. Yeah, Oscar de la Hoya on there, and he was pretty funny. Yeah, there, oh, that was funny. There have been, been so many that, that have just been good. Uh, be real. Uh, uh, be real. Be Constance. real was yep. be, be real was uh, Melissa, Melissa Via Senor. Oh yeah, via, yeah, the one with the impressions, the one that does uh, yes. uh, Kathy Griffin and uh, yeah, yeah. She was she was funny. It was a fun she show. Funny. Uh, be real was surprising to me uh, because he was he was really good. You know, I I sat there. And, you know, I'm a retired thirty eight. 38 years from the sheriff's department mm -hmm. and my specialty was gangs because that's where I grew up on the street it was a natural inn and to be on the show and then be real get in there and this guy's a dope smoking you know he's a marijuana smoker yeah, shout out to Dr. Green Thomas. that's another and doctor is, and I got on her and I said what the heck am I what am I going to do in, in the room with this guy you know we're talking about all this week and I found out that he's an extremely intelligent man. He's a extremely nice guy. He's a good guy. And then I went, uh, that was only the second show I had been on with George, I think. Mm -hmm. And a couple of weeks later, I went to go see George uh, in a comedy show. My family was with me and they're playing some kick-ass music. And all of a sudden my daughter says, hey, dad. That's be real. The guy you had on the comedy. So yep. I had no idea that uh, you know he was that's a Doctor Green Thumb. Hello, my name is yeah, Doctor Green Thumb. Yes, that's, that, that's Cypress he, Hill. Cypress Hill. Exactly. My hats off to him. He was a great guy, and you know, it's like uh, hopefully made a friend. You know. Oh, you we did. Were, you did. I mean, it, you, you guys were great. Good. It was a good show. It was good to see him. It was good to be with him, and certainly made an impact on me.
Wow, you just thought you were going to be in a room full of just weed smoking. You would have got contact. You would have been like, George, I don't do this shit. But well, he, the, the first thing, he gave uh, George uh, some kind of weed smoking apparatus. I don't know what they call this shit. Oh, man. Uh, but didn't it have was a gas a, mask and shit. Just... It was a big one. And I'm saying, man, don't start lighting up in here, please. <laughs> and they didn't. No, nobody did anything right there. And I'm not a prude. I don't give a shit who smokes weed, where they smoke weed. Uh, I just didn't want to give the impression to the viewers. That I did. That, yeah, that you did. That I did, you know, yeah. and, and, and we talked about it. And George even said, he says, oh, come on, Gil. Fuck, you're not a cop anymore. <laughs> and, you know, fucking weed. I said, George, they had weed in Vietnam. Weed, you could buy it. It was a pack of cools, cool cigarettes. The Vietnamese people would black market all this shit. They'd get a pack of cools. They done seal them, roll out all the tobacco, and fill every cigarette with weed, Damn. reseal it, and then sell you the pack. And they were easy. Everybody can, anybody who wanted them could buy them, and they were cheap. And so I said, George, but I was flying, and I needed all my faculties, and and I wouldn't. Nobody in my helicopter is going to be loaded. You know, this. Is, yeah, I mean, that's going to affect you your die. shot and everything. Yeah, so you, you can't be messing around. So I didn't use it then. Then I got out of the army and I went into the sheriff's department. And when I first started working patrol, weed was a felony. And then it became a misdemeanor and now it's legal. And I'm not a prude. I don't care who smokes it. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't offend me. I wish I had the intestinal fortitude that I just don't smoke anymore of anything. That's true. But, you know, I, I've, I've used gummies for pain to sleep yeah. and... So it, it's, I don't care what anybody else does. That's true. But I didn't want to show the viewers that I was partaking in this. Uh, and especially my old colleagues, I didn't want them to think that, hey, what happened to you? And so I told George, it's just a personal thing with me. I, I don't, I've thrown more weed away than I've ever taken people to uh, to That's jail good. for the felony. You know, it, it's not your cup of tea is what you're saying to no. me. You know, like me, I get paranoid on it too. I don't even smoke weed and it's legal. Like now the ice cream man sells the shit. You know, it's like, <laughs> dos por cinco, dos por cinco. Like, hey, 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 wait, hey, dog. You're going to make me fuck around and, and, and go on and hit this. And then I'm, I'm going to be paranoid all day. I got shit to do. You know, so it gets rough. You know I mean? Hey, that's not your cup of tea. I yeah. get it, you know, which is cool. You know, and you can have everybody loaded in your squadron or, or, or your squad, you know, like shit, that is going to affect. You think it was strategic though? Like, you know what? Just take all the tobacco out and get all these motherfuckers high. They're, they're going to be shooting all over the place. They're going to not know. They're going to run out of bullets. Guys, the, the guys, uh, you know, they used it, I would imagine, to take their mind off of what they're going through. Uh, not as many in the air, but the, the guys on the ground. Mm -hmm. Guys on the ground shit, I'd have been smoking it too. It was, it was ugly. <laughs> were, were you getting drunk though? Were you getting like a little tipsy oh, yeah. over there in Vietnam? Yeah. I, was, I was drinking. How was, I, was uh, I gotta ask, how was it the first night there? Like, damn, I'm out here. This is real. You know, it was it was different. It really didn't hit me. You land in country, and it's a big base. You go there, and then they separate you. Okay, where are you going? So you're about the second day, you now transfer to the unit you're going to be assigned to. Mm -hmm. I got there, and when I did get there, uh, was the first day of the Tet Offensive, mm -hmm. which was their big uh, – it's their New Year's. And – festivals and all that shit yeah but there were no festivals i mean it was an, it was an all-out surprise uh attack i don't know who was surprised you know the u.s wasn't ready for it they mm -hmm. they attacked from north from south in the middle in the highlands and so my first night in a hooch just imagine uh it's like a uh a hut a quonset hut you know a small like a bungalow that's Ooh. where we slept. Like a big ass and, uh, easy up. Yeah, the air, the air strips right there, right in front of us. Damn. And all of a sudden, rockets and mortars started coming in, hitting the ground. You can feel the ground shaking. You're sitting hearing this boom, sirens are going off. Guys are yelling, uh, incoming at the top oh, of their land. I was on a top bunk. I jumped down. This is my first night in bed, first night oh. in my unit. Man. I jumped down. The floor is concrete, and it's not even smooth concrete. It's just 
brushed concrete. And so I low crawl. That's all I know. Shit, get, get down, get crawl. Down, get down, get down. I crawled and got to the front door and it's all over with. It stopped. And a guy looked at me and said, welcome to the NOM, kid. Welcome oh, to the NOM. Oh, hell no. <laughs> yeah. so I said, all right. Because what you do is you get out, out that front door and there was a bunker right underneath us. And so you get into the bunker. Mm-hmm. And that was my first night in country. And it was a, from there, it was a, just a whole different world. And, it, you know, people often ask me, how was it? You know, you'd get up, you'd go out and fly, you'd have your missions. And sometimes they'd be ugly. Sometimes they'd be easy. Awful lot of combat. You come back, refuel your ship, rearm, then go into the hooch and drink. And they had Armed Forces TV, so we watched combat on TV. Uh, the combat was on a program called The Laugh-In. And you'd see the same thing, you know, two or three days in a row. Right. They'd have it. There wasn't much, but you'd get to see something just to take your mind off of what's going on. Wow. But it was indoors. At least it was indoors. Well, that's true, man. You don't want to be out there or in a bunker. That is why, right. man. First night, I can only imagine that. That's like a prison story, you know. I mean, I, I've been there, done that. I go, what? Just, riots are going on in there. It's real. Look around. Yeah, this is it. This is an eye opener. But I, I, I'll tell you right now, there are absolutely no winners in war. Nobody wins. I don't care no. what side you're on. You're right. Both sides lose. Both sides have go through tragedy. Uh, it matured me, gave me a new appreciation on life. So that's why I wanted to come back and be a cop. Because it was a cop that took me home mm-hmm. at age 17 and told my parents, sign for me to get off the streets here, live up dead or in prison. Wow, so beautiful. I wanted to come back and give back what that guy gave me. He saved my life. Now, I appreciate you, man. Because probably without that guy, I probably wouldn't even have an interview with you. That's, the that's right. Stuff. You know, like he probably he saved your life. Like at the end of the day, he did. I mean, growing up in, in, in Pico, you know, like Pico Rivera down, but you know, like it's, it's, it could get rough, you know, it's all gang and, you know, and infested and we don't know nothing but that, you know, once the, once the streets uh, suck you in, it, it's hard to get out of it, you know? Yeah. It's very rough. So you made a great turnaround, man. You were a legend. I got mad love for you, Gil, you know? Uh, well, and, thank um, you, Dr. Nader. On some real stuff, you know I mean? I'm trying to do my thing, turn one into two things, get money in a few rings. That's all I got to do, you know? So, hey. It was a pleasure. Uh, uh, what do you got next? What do you got next coming up, Gil? Uh, nothing. Just be with George. I'm going to miss George just next week. I'm going to be in Seattle. Okay. Uh, after that, we'll be together the rest of the year. Don't forget uh, NBC, Friday night, November 4th, 8 o'clock, prime time. George is going to start his new TV show. Yes, Lopez. with his daughter. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be there uh, the night that uh, the first episode Mm-hmm. Uh, the wife and I went down there to watch it and support him. And it's going to be another, another great show. And just uh, finish out the year with George and then uh, see what I have in store for next year. You know, I don't care. If, you know, I'm retired from most of this stuff. Now I sit back the time I get around uh, when I'm not speaking or not doing podcasts. And that just means I get to spend time with my grandkids and my kids are gone, but you know, they come back. Uh, well, one of them lives with me. They come back and visit and get to see them all the time. We're close. Got a close family. That's right. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful thing. I mean, because family is key. Family is everything. That's right. Um, y'all don't break that for nothing. You know, uh, hey, it, it was a pleasure, Gil. You know, I know you're a busy man, and I, I do appreciate you uh, stopping by, just giving me a little love, you know. But, you know, uh, I got to get a, on a bigger premium on this, or they're going to cut hey, my well, interview There you off. go. I, ho- I hope it works out well for you. I thank can't you, thank you enough for the invitation for being on. And I'm so happy for you. So proud that you're, you're pushing on. Just keep on keeping on, brother. And God bless you. I got love for you. Hey, God bless you too, Gil, man. It was a pleasure on some real stuff. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Hey, you have a good day. And uh, you get yourself uh, better, uh, uh, you and Perla, uh, which I know you guys are just rock solid. I love it. That's something that everybody <laughs> wants and, and, you know, and, and hopes for, you know, because it's easy to quit. I've done it a thousand times. Let's not quit, ladies and gentlemen, and let's keep pushing. Let's keep doing something. If she's worth it, fix it. There you go. I am the doctor, and I approve that message. <laughs> Thank you. I'll see you, brother. Have a good one. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.